Good morning, Hardy, Jasmine, and Autumn. Uh, with the, this is a uh, Hardy video, video dominantly. Um, so I'm going to read from Brendel again, and um, I'm going to do is in a few words from the book that I got yesterday. It's a 12 minute word you should know to sound smart. Um, so I think we left off on chapter two. Two, Miss Granger. Fifth grade was different. That was the idiot ready for middle school. Fifth grade meant passing classes. It meant no more recess. It meant real letter grades on your report cards. But most of all, it meant Miss Granger. There were about 150 kids in fifth grade, and there were seven fifth grade teachers. Two math, two science, two social studies, but only one language arts teacher. In language arts, Miss Granger had a monopoly and a reputation. Miss Granger lived alone in a tidy little house in the older part of town. She drove an old, pale, blue car to school every morning. Rain or shine, snow or sleet, hail or wind, she had a perfect attendance record that stretched back further than anyone could remember. Her hair was almost white, swept away from her face, and up into something like a nest on the back of her head. Unlike some of the younger women teachers, she never wore pants to school. She had two skirt and jacket outfits, her gray uniform, and her blue uniform which she also always wore over a white shirt with a little cameo pin at the neck. And Miss Granger was one of those people who never sweats. It had to be over 90 degrees before she even took off her jacket. She was, a, she was small as teachers go. There were even some fifth graders who were taller. But Miss Granger seemed like a giant. It was her eyes that did it. They were dark gray, and if she turned them on full power, they could make you feel like a speck of dust. Her eyes could twinkle and laugh too, and kids said she could crack really funny jokes. But it wasn't the jokes that made her famous. Everyone is sure that Miss Granger had x-ray vision. Don't even think about chewing a piece of gum within 50 feet of her. If you did, Miss Granger would see you and catch you and make you stick the gum onto a bright yellow index card. Then she would safety pin the card to the front of your shirt and you'd have to wear it for the rest of the school day. After that, you had to take it home and have your mom and dad sign the card and bring it back to Miss Granger the next day. And it didn't matter, Miss Granger, if you weren't in fifth grade because the way she saw it, sooner or later, you would be. All the kids at Lincoln Elementary School knew that at the end of the line, fifth grade, Miss Granger would be the one grade in the spelling test, in the reading test, and worst of all, the vocabulary test, week after week, month after month. Every language arts teacher in the world enjoys making kids use the dictionary. Check your spelling. Check that definition. Check those syllable breaks. But Miss Granger didn't just enjoy the dictionary. She loved the dictionary. Almost worshipped it. Her weekly vocabulary list was 35 words long, sometimes longer. As if that wasn't bad enough, there was a word for the day on the blackboard every morning. If you gave yourself a day off and didn't write one down and look it up and learn a definition, sooner or later Miss Granger would find out, and then just for you, there would be two words for the day for a whole week. Miss Granger kept a full set of 30 dictionaries on herself at the back of the room, but her pride and joy was one of those huge dictionaries with every word in the universe in it, the kind of book it takes two kids to carry. It sat on its own little table at the front of her classroom, sort of like the altar at the front of a church. Every graduate of Lincoln Elementary School for the past 35 years could remember standing at that table listening to Miss Granger's battle cry. Look it up. That's why we have the dictionary. Even before the school year started, when it was still the summer before fifth grade for Nick and his friends, Miss Granger was already busy. Every parent of every new fifth grader got a letter from her. Nick's mom read part of it out loud during dinner one night in August. Every home is expected to have a good dictionary in it so that each student can do his or her homework properly. Good spelling and good grammar and good word skills are essential for every student. Clear thinking requires a command of the English language, and fifth grade is the ideal time for every girl and boy to acquire an expanded vocabulary. And then there was a list of the di dictionaries that Miss Granger thought would be acceptable for home study. Miss Allen said, It's so nice to have a teacher who takes her work this seriously. Nick groaned and tried to enjoy the rest of his hamburger, but even watermelon for dessert didn't cheer him up. Nick had no particular use for the dictionary. He liked words a lot, and he was good at using them, but he figured that he got all the words he needed just by reading, and he read all the time. When Nick ran into a word he didn't know, he asked his brother or his dad, or whoever was handy, what it meant, and if they knew, they'd tell him, but not Miss Granger. He had heard all about her, and he had seen fifth graders in the library last year, noses stuck in their dictionaries, frantically trying to finish their vocabulary sheets before English class. It was still a week before school, and Nick already felt like fifth grade was going to be a very long year. She's uh, pretty scary. I had a few teachers like that too. Um, cool thing is, 
you you know who your teacher is and she loves you and uh you know she uh does her best to teach you and uh it shows you're very very intelligent and very smart everybody everybody knows that about you already so uh yeah just don't ever let anybody tell you you're stupid um so let me uh, teach you a few words and i think it's kind of cool that uh the books chapter two was all about words i didn't plan that <laughs> so let's see abatement noun the reduction or elimination of a tax claim fine or debt by having her daddy pull strings in the mayor's office sylvia received a quick abatement of her traffic ticket so uh, it's spelled a b a t e m e n t so uh next word Abjure. It's a transitive verb, and it means to renounce or turn your back on a belief or position you once held near and dear. Once Jody tasted my mouth-watering, medium-rare filet mignon, she abjured the vegetarian lifestyle forever. It's spelled A-B-J-U-R-E. Abominate. It's a verb. When you abominate something, you really really hate and dislike it and view it with considerable loathing for my part i abominate all honorable respectful toils trials and tribulations of every kind whatsoever it's a quote from herman melville who is an american author abscond to leave in a hurry oh it's a verb to leave in a hurry but quietly so as to escape notice especially to avoid trouble bored out of his wits jared absconded with the family mercedes but he wrapped it around a large oak tree it's spelled A B S C O N D. Abstemi, abstemus. To eat plain, oh, it's an adjective. To eat plain and simple food in moderation, avoiding overindulgence in drinking and gluttony at the table. Gandhi led an abstemus life. Abstruse is an adjective. Arcane, complex, difficult to understand and learn. Bob began to wish there was, in fact, a Santa Claus because he found simple instructions to his son's bicycle far too abstruse. Acculturation. The process of adapting to a different culture. The noun. Just because sushi makes me queasy doesn't mean I'm opposed to acculturation. Acrimonious is an adjective means angry, bitter, disputed. Oh, I didn't spell acculturation. A-C-C-U-L-T-U-R-A-T-I-O-N. And acrimonious is uh, A-C-R-I-M-O-N-I-O-U-S. And um, the sentence is, There is something about the literary life that repels me. All this desperate building of castles and cobwebs, the long-drawn acrimonious struggle to make something important, which we all know will be gone forever in a few years. That's a quote from Raymond Chandler, another American author. All right, so um, do this, do more of that um, tomorrow, I guess. And um, later on, I'm gonna teach Jasmine um, how to spell a few simpler words. Um, I'd like to say um, good morning. Doesn't feel as good as uh, it should. Feel a little better than yesterday. But uh, still rips my heart out. And I'm at war with myself. Um, Wondering if you feel the same way, but deep down knowing I don't wish this feeling on anybody. Not even your mom.
I love you guys. I miss you. And um, I'm going to go do a few errands. I'm going to grab those journals. And uh, yeah, and I'll uh, make the assisted video a little bit later today so I can um, say goodnight to you guys. Love you.